Hi everybody, this is the instructional video for your pattern textile design project and I just wanted to briefly review some of the concepts and ideas I talked about in the lecture. Be sure to view the main lecture on pattern and art. And for this you're going to be doing a straight repeat design. There's two different basic types of designs that you'll see in textile and other pattern designs. Um, we have what we call straight repeat something like this, where I took the abstracted motif of an Eiffel Tower and I set it into a straight repeat. You should always put your swatches of whatever um, colors you're using. If it's a specific color harmony, you can write that on there too. Now with this design, you'll notice if we look at it in the vertical format, it looks like the Eiffel Towers are the positive, but if we start to tilt it, we start to see more that the negative space forms a pattern itself. So depending on um, the values and everything, you have a pretty um, striking intense color against a white background. So you're gonna have more of a reaction with the change in the figure ground relationship. So keep that in mind when you're doing your color version. These were done in a textile course that I took years ago, painted in gouache, which is how a lot of the textile designs start out and then they're set into repeats or, or they're in a repeat already like this regular repeat and you can see that the quality of the paint is amazing because it looks exactly like it did the day that I painted it hasn't faded at all and I've kept it of course away from light and then you have your croquis design this cat design that I did and you can see that this is not um, set into a regular pattern that we can recognize we have an irregular pattern with repetition of the cats and some of the colors but if I wanted to apply this to textiles or to some other type of pattern design, and there's many different applications, tiling, um, upholstery, and various things like that, I would have to set it into a repeat. And often what is done is it's cut in half. This part will go down there, that part will go up there, or it could be cut into three sections. A lot of this is done on computers now, so you get a more regular, um, perfect repetition of everything. Um, the beauty of things that are done by hand is you can still see that it's done by hand, but they won't be quite as perfect. And then I have some, I, I recommend that you start out with your graph paper and make some sketches either in black and white or directly in color. And these, what I did, we're going to be working with an 8 by 8 inch grid, and it's going to have 16 2 by 2 inch boxes in it. You should sketch it all out on your graph paper ahead of time. And then you can either start out with a smaller motif which can be flipped and tilted and changed to create the pattern. Or you could start out like I did with all of these designs um, with a larger design that's in the four by four inch box. And you can see here, I worked directly on the graph paper because I was using the grid structure in some of them, not in this one. This actually looks like one that I did as a watercolor that I couldn't find a long time ago. And you can see most of these, this one is actually just a little pointillist portrait. So what I would do to create the pattern in this case is I would take my four by four inch box and I would repeat it three times, whether I'm flipping it around or not, it would be repeated three more times, four times total in the eight by eight inch grid. This was another design I showed you in the lecture, a really good example of a four point turning square design, really beautiful design. The use of the color is beautiful with the complements, the yellow and violet, and then you have some touches of blue and green added in also. And this I could actually see in a lot of different applications. It could be for textiles, could be for upholstery, for tiling, maybe in the kitchen. But when I look at it, it really stands out to me that this could be, the dragonflies could be a jewelry design, like a pin or earrings or a necklace. It would be beautiful. Okay, so what I did was I started out with some sketches in my two by two inch boxes on my graph paper. You could, if you're working on the larger graph paper, you can just do everything on there, or you could use one or two pieces, depending what you want to do. I had various little designs, and then I decided to use my ladybug design that I had shown you, I believe, in another, in the, one of the Notan expansion of a square. And instead of doing it in a four-point turning square, I did another pattern, and I put it in an angle because I knew what I wanted to do. I had to scale it down a bit to fit the two by two inch box because it wasn't exactly the right size. And then this one, I scaled them all up into a four by four inch box to see what they would look like. This one I haven't done yet in 
um, grayscale or color, but I, I want to do it in watercolor eventually because I think it will look beautiful that way. It'll look kind of like a stained glass. This one I did. On the graph paper in black and white, your finished pieces should be on the, your drawing paper. And I did it as a horizontal mirror symmetry with the image flipping this way and then that way. And then the ladybug design, I took the angled drawing that I did of it, put it into the two by two inch box, and I added a little shape in here because I wanted to get a flower. And then I just flipped it in what I call diagonal mirror symmetry. So you can see it's going like that and then like that. I'm not sure if I even flipped it, but anyway, they're all going into the center and then you get a beautiful scrolling design. So one of the patterns that you can follow, which is in the lecture, I believe that I mentioned is the four point turning square. And what that means is you take your smaller motif, which is what I did for this one, and then you're changing it in four different directions. This usually gives you a really nice pinwheel design. I have two examples of that to show you. So what you would do for that, or for really for any, whatever pattern you're gonna follow, you're gonna take your smaller design, whichever one you wanna try, and you're going to right top Put an arrow and then you can see what I did here was I flipped it this way, that way, that way, and this way. So I have the four point turning square. For this one, I traced it as it was once I did it, scaled up to four by four inch, and I could see that I was happy with it. And then using the four by four inch grid, I transferred it onto the cardstock for the final color version. Now, I'm not sure how this is gonna come across because I had a really hard time photographing this, but these were done with metallic ink pens. And you can see it's a very beautiful scroll design. It has to be seen in the right light to see how beautiful it is. It looks very delicate. And for the black and white version, I'm gonna do silver and black. That would probably show up better. And you can see I did a lot of little swatches. Actually, it should be seen this way, but it doesn't really matter because it's symmetrical. Um, I did swatches. If you're working on the color paper for your background, make sure to do some um, little, you know, daubs of your paint or your ink or whatever you're using to see how it's going to change on the color background because it will be different. And then the last one, last thing I was going to do, I didn't have time to finish this one. I, I took my Siamese cat that I did for one of our collages. And I just took the head and I used that as a four by four inch croquis design and then it could be flipped. Um, maybe I was thinking maybe flip it going up and then the other way to make it into a pattern. So this is what you're working with, just to go over this again. An eight by eight inch grid. You should have four two by two inch boxes and then 16, I'm sorry, four four by four inch boxes and then 16 two by two inch boxes. If you do this all on your graph paper, you'll be fine, but use your ruler just to make sure, um, you know, that you have the right measurements. And here was the tracing I had for the Siamese cat that I used. Sorry, everything's falling off over here as usual. Okay, so here I did both the grayscale and the color version for the sort of like, I'm not sure what to call this, kind of like a leaf, a puzzle, and a flower. And I can actually see faces in here too. So it came out really well in the four point turning square. I could see this used in a lot of different applications, tiling, um, textile, upholstery. This would be nice for a throw pillow, maybe something like that. And I used the four point turning square, just like I showed you, where I flipped it around. I used a metallic, I don't know if you can see this is metallic marker that I used and I used the Stadler watercolor markers um, for the version. I just did a very simple thing for the um, color monochromatic, just using one shade of violet. And I didn't want to start adding a background and I thought that these forms would 
stand out very well. I might try another one where I do watercolor, where I do a very light wash background, and then I work on with dry brush or markers and see what happens if I have a background too. So you can see the four point turning square, you get kind of a pinwheel design. The only thing that won't you have to watch out for in the four point turning square is you can't use a perfectly circular radial symmetry, uh, symmetrical design because when you flip it around, it's not going to change at all. And if you're gonna do something like that, then you're gonna to have to use the color to create the pattern in the design. Okay, and don't forget, look at your color wheel. If you're trying to do the different color harmonies and everything, this is the, the subtractive color wheel with red, yellow, blue as your primaries, and then green, violet, orange as your secondaries, and then you've got all the tertiaries. So if you get confused about the color harmonies, you can um, you know, always refer back to the color wheel. You can just use whichever colors you would like to um, for this project also. You don't have to follow one of the harmonies, but if you follow a specific harmony, you should write it down. You can see in this one, I forgot to mention it, in the ladybug design, I actually used a primary triadic design with red, yellow, and blue because I have pink. And then I have some blue, which I added into the patterns on the ladybug and the gold was the yellow. And then we have silver acts sort of like a neutral. Okay, so have fun with this. This is a really fun project. And if you're worried about doing all of the repetitions, just try to make your design as simple as possible. It'll go a lot faster. What I do when I do this is, whether I'm doing using the small grid or not, when I'm ready to transfer it, first I just transfer the eight by eight inch, just that, and I put my center points in case I need them. Then I transfer, or I get my, I said I can't find it now. Well, anyway, I can't find that, this specific pattern, but then I, I take my smaller one and I transfer it onto the graph paper or onto a piece of tracing paper until I have a larger four by four inch. And I see what my design is going to be. pieces fell on the floor so I can't show you this one right now but what I do I'll show you just by showing you so I take my tracing paper and then I trace the four by four inch without any of these lines unless you're going to use the grid structure for your pattern you don't really need these lines and you don't want to have all those lines of pencil lines to transfer all over and then you have to try and cover over them if you're using a lighter color or watercolor or something like that so I just trace this I trace the design as it is, and then I can transfer that four times onto the grid on the drawing paper. And when I did this design, wait, maybe it's under here. No, it's not under there either. When I did this design, what I did was I did trace, transferred this entire side, and then instead of doing that four times, because the, the tracing paper can get kind of worn out when you're doing that, Just the way that I did. I just traced over that again because you're transferring it several times and the pencil builds up and it's just harder to do. So after I did one side, I traced the whole thing again. And then instead of doing that, I mirrored it because I wanted to see what would happen. And then I transferred it again to here. And then I, once I have it transferred in pencil, I will just take an eraser and I'll kind of lightly erase the pencil because in case I don't want the pencil showing through. In this case, it was okay because the silver and the purple would color that, but I still did a little bit of erasing just to make sure I didn't have any pencil showing through. Okay, and then you would just label it and say, which is grayscale, what type of pattern you've used, and the color harmonies. So have fun, take care.